Hey guys, this is Mr. Bradstreet and welcome to Unit 9.3, Transport in Plants. There's a lot of different materials that need to be transported in plants. Water, sugars, air, carbon dioxide and oxygen. And in this podcast, we're going to focus mainly on how water and sugars are transported in plants. So, like I said, water needs to be transported, sugar needs to be transported, and gases need to be exchanged. And so, this all goes back to photosynthesis, which is occurring mostly in the leaves. And if you remember, the formula for photosynthesis is that plants need some water, they need some carbon dioxide, and in the presence of sunlight, they're able to generate sugars, or glucose, and they release oxygen as a byproduct. And so these leaves need water, and the water's in the ground, so they have to have a way to get water up to the leaves, and they need CO2, and the leaves are going to be making a bunch of sugars. And the leaves aren't going to be able to store all those sugars, so they have to have a way to get those sugars from where they're made up in the leaves to some place where they can be stored. So the, the material that transports um, water and sugars in plants is called vascular tissue. It's a lot like our veins and arteries in our, in our body. The type that transports water is called xylem. And since plants need water up in the leaves, but all the water occurs down on the ground, most of the time this involves moving up from the ground up to the leaves. There's two main types of xylem cells. There's one called vessel elements, and then there's a second type of xylem cell called a tracheid. They're both dead at maturity, so these are dead cells, which means they're basically hollowed out pipes. Um, plant cells literally have like these little hollow tubes or little straws or pipes running through them that water flows through. The big difference between vessel elements and tracheids is that the vessel elements are a large pipe, you can see them right here, while the tracheids are these smaller, thinner pipes. Um, now, since we're going up against gravity, plants have to have a way to get the water from the roots down to the, up to the, the leaves. It's not like plants have, a, have any kind of pump. It's not like in our body where we have a heart that contracts and moves the, our blood throughout our veins. Plants don't have any type of pump. So it has to be all based on some sort of passive method. And that's done through this thing called transpirational pull. So the way transpirational pull works is whenever those stomates, remember these uh, air, these little holes on the underside of leaves where carbon dioxide comes in and oxygen comes out? Well, whenever they have their stomates open, in addition to oxygen going out, water vapor also comes out. And what that does is it creates a, a pull. Literally, the way water moves up into plants is like having a straw and sucking up on that straw to where the water moving out of this creates this pull, this suction, that sucks up all the water coming up from below it. So when you have all the way up here at the top of this xylem cell, whenever some of that water Tr goes through transpiration and leaves out of there, it creates a suction that draws the rest of it up that tube. And one of the ways, if you remember this from way back at the beginning of the year, water has these hydrogen bonds that link it together through that process called cohesion. And so whenever one water molecule moves, the water molecule below it sticks together with it and they all move up in a big chain like they're because they're all stuck together. And so that suction up at the top pulls that column of water up from the ground up to the leaves where it's needed. Um, to, to remind you guys a little bit of uh, how this ties in with some of the stuff we looked at in our last unit, um, remember these things called mycorrhizae. They're fungi that a lot of plants have this symbiotic, mutualistic relationship between the fungus and the plant roots, where having those that fungus around the plant roots acts like a big sponge and allows them to soak up extra water. Okay, so water was transported through those vascular tissue called xylem. Sugars, or food, 
is transported through this vascular tissue called phloem. And they carry nutrients and sugar, generally down from the leaves to the stems or the, the roots where they'll, be, where they'll be stored for later. Um, and there's two types, just like um, xylem cells, there's two types of phloem cells. There's sieve tube cells and companion cells. Um, a big difference though, I'll tell you a big difference here, is xylem cells were dead at maturity. Phloem cells are living at maturity. Because all that's being transported through the xylem is water, they can just be empty pipes. But since what's being transported through the phloem is a sugary nutrient substance, it has to be transported through the cytoplasm of, of cells. So those cells have to be alive. There is a pretty big difference though between the sieve tube elements and the companion cells. The sieve tube elements are where most of the, the sugar um, gets transported. And so because of that, they're very highly adapted cells that have lost most of their, what you would consider a cell to have. They don't have a nucleus, they don't have a lot of other organelles. They're specialized just for carrying sugar. And so since they're specialized for carrying just sugar, they kind of have to have a little life support cell next to them to keep them alive. And so this companion cell acts like kind of a little bit of a, a life support for the sieve tube cell. And it is connected to that sieve tube cell. And the companion cell has the nucleus, it has the other organelles. And so it helps keep this one alive because this one's specialized to carry all that sugar. Um, yeah, the sieve tube cells don't have a nucleus, don't have ribosomes, um, no vacuole. They're mainly specialized for carrying that sucrose or glucose um, or fructose, some of those different sugars. Um, we looked at these in class, but just to remind you, there's a pretty big difference between the stems of a monocot and dicot. And remember, both monocots and dicots are both part of that class called angiosperms, the flowering plants. And the dicots have their vascular tissue, their xylem phloem, arranged in this neat ring around the outside. With the xylem cells here, you can see the larger cells towards the inside, and the phloem cells are in this layer that a lot of times we refer to as bark in a tree to the outside. Whereas monocots, their vascular tissue, their xylem and phloem are all just kind of scattered throughout the, the stem. So just to review, xylem transports water generally up from the roots up to the leaves where it's needed for photosynthesis. And it's powered by transpiration, by water leaving the leaves. It leaves the leaves through the stomates, creates a suction that draws the water up. And then phloem carries sugars or food, generally in the downward direction, from the leaves where it's made to the stems and roots where it'll be stored for later use. And don't forget there are two types of xylem cells, uh, vessel elements and tracheids, and there are two types of phloem cells, sieve tube cells and companion cells.